Hello, my name is Oded Blatman. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Netsys10.com. Today we are going to talk about how social engineering can be used in order to penetrate the defense industries and any other company for that fact. So, shall we begin? Our media or database is the WebInt. WebInt basically, or uh, open source intelligence, or web intelligence is basically talking about all the information that is in the internet and you will not believe how much information there is out there. Everything can be found on the internet. I can know about you, your friends, your hobbies, your work, your co-mates and so on. You can see celebrities that are talking and putting their agenda on the internet. You can even see how the Facebook uh, was a tool for governments um, to fall down, basically, or ba basically it was a tool for empower for the people, okay, to bring down governments, as you saw in Cairo and Egypt and other places in the world. So basically, everything that is in the internet and open source, we call them social engineering or social intelligence, okay. All the information that I can gather about you, your friends, hobbies, and all the address and so forth. So, today, in every company, there is security elements. You have the firewalls, you have the antiviruses, you have uh, deep packet inspections, and you have many other uh, security tools, auditing, and so on. But, you know, they are not uh, prepared or designed to deal with the human factor. Okay? And this is what I want to talk in this video. Social engineering basically is an example of such an exploit that can be done in order to uh, breach the corporate security. So basically what is social engineering? You can see here the definition in Wikipedia but in short basically it's fraud, impersonation and persuasion. I want to persuade you of something that I am not and make you do something that you didn't want to do in the first place. So let's see how it works, okay? What is the weapon in cyber warfare, you know? It's basically malware, viruses, and Trojan horses, and so forth, that are not doing a really big boom or explosion as other, uh, you know, weapons, but they can make your corporate either lose information or they can make you a downtime that you didn't want to do it, and they can even do it in critical assets that you have, power plants, and so on, airport cities, uh, seaports, rigs, and so forth. Now, such a malware is really not a big deal, okay? If you don't know how to write it yourself, and you know what they say, that every bug is a feature, but basically, if you don't know how to write it yourself, go to the internet, it costs a couple of hundreds of dollars, which is not a big deal for uh, the attacker. Or in, in case of governments, you know, they have unlimited resources, they can do whatever they want. So once we have this malware, we can hide it and disguise it into an innocent looking file format. For example, PDF, Excel, and so forth, that when our target audience will double click and execute this PDF, they might see something, even a picture or whatever, but in the back door, okay, we will have our Trojan horse and virus and malware um, be executed. So let's start with a demonstration. I, I took some target company, okay, a, a global company, a global defense company sitting in Europe. And as for a disclaimer, this company um, is not really um, something that we did the physical penetration uh, trust, test into it. We only want to um, give you the mythology and raise the awareness of the problematic issues. I'm not saying anything about their security and quality or um, software and so on. But we are talking basically about a global company, okay? Global company that is uh, spread across the globe, almost 90,000 workers. And you know that every global company or major industry, defense industry, can be exposed. And we are going to show you five steps on how to do it. First of all, and the most important thing, is how we gather the information. 
okay? How we create the database of people, of emails, of passwords that we want to do in order to penetrate the company. Once we gather the intelligence, and this is what takes really the most time, we are going to prepare an innocent looking infrastructure in order for the people that will come to our website for this example will think that it's their own and this is the, you know, the kind of uh, fraud and impersonation that we are talking about. Then we are going to send some kind of a bait that the people will come to our faked infrastructure. We are going to receive the information and then send the malware that we bought. So the first step is gather the information. Where we are going to take this information from? The social medias. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Google, we have LinkedIn, and so on. All the information is out there. What you can see here in the picture, I asked to be a member of the target company, okay? In the, a member in LinkedIn. And after they checked my credentials, here you can see that I'm a member and now I can see even more details about the workers in this company. Now we have basically two, two ways of how we can gather the information. The first one is a manual way. Okay? We are looking for a specific targets. We are looking for the executives in this uh, company. We are looking for the experts, for example, the database administrators or the software engineers and so forth. We know exactly what we are looking for. We're looking for the radar uh, workers or rocket engineers and so on, okay? We know exactly what we are looking for. And once we know, we can search Google and then build a profile that is similar in the interest to the persons that we are looking for. Okay, we can do a cross matching between different medias. We can do a crossing from LinkedIn, Facebook, and others. Okay, in order to create myself the impersonation, the same profile in order for me to communicate with them for the same area of interest and so on. So once we did this, we can create this profile and start gathering even more information. Start talking to them you know, hey, you're a software developer, I'm a software developer, what do you say about this, where are you from, who are your friends, who are your co-workers, and so on. So basically, when we are talking about manual gathering, what we are doing is manual search for things that we care about, that we target them, and then we are doing cross-matching between different social uh, medias, and then we are creating a faked uh, profile. But, let's say, and this is the results, by the way. You can see that we have, for example, the CIO of the company. We have the uh, engineering communications. We have the database. We have the software engineers. Those are the people that can give me very unique and precious information that I want in this example. But we can also have an automatic gathering. This is taking a more a different perspective, meaning that I want a large number of people and not specific ones that I want. We're talking about quantity rather than quality. This is done by an automatic tool. So what I'm basically taking is taking some crawler that is free on the internet and putting, you know, at and the name of the company and search. You can see here in this example, that I, I let this program go for a couple of hours. I got 1,600 and something email addresses of employees in this company. Let's add the ones that we did manually. And now we have 1,700 email address. This can be exported into an Excel and be used later on. Now, this, the second step, okay? Let's prepare the infrastructure for impersonation. We know what the name of the target company. Let's create a similar website, okay? But with a different letter, some, something that will sound the same. For in this example, I took my own company, for example, Netsys. So instead of the Y, we put an I, okay? 
or let's say that my company name is ABC Systems, I will create a domain ABC System without the S dot com. And as you can see, this domain is available. We don't want to uh, alert the suspicions of the workers, so we're going to change a little bit the, the name. Then we are going to create an HTML file that looks the same as their remote login access. Okay, you know that every company can allow their workers to do a remote login and work outside the corporate, and they can use Outlook Web Access or any other uh, application. You know that most companies allow their users to work remotely. And when they are doing this, they have an access page where they're putting their usernames and passwords. I'm going to create the same. It's a simple HTML file. As you can see, username and password. Now let's send the bait. And this story, okay, what we're going to do is say that the human resource department, which every corporate has one, decided to send an, a gift for the holiday. Okay? It could be wine, it could be a discount key. Everybody loves receiving discount key with a company logo. Okay? So I created some kind of nice image with a press here button. That's right, the link will, will go straight to my own domain. Now let's send this bait to all the people that we have in the database, in the list, the 1,700 uh, people from our Excel, and wait. What we saw is the following, that about 40% of the people receiving this mail press the link. And the majority part of them fill their username and password. They did not notice that the URL is not really their own. They fill the username and password, which we recorded, of course. And then they got some faked message. Now, the only th the another thing that we saw is that people that did not receive the mail because they were not in our database ask the workers, hey, I want this discount key also, okay? Please send this mail to me. And we got even a bigger exposure than the ones we anticipated. Once we have the database, we have the username, the password, we have the malware, we can simply log in as the users and send this malware to everybody in the company. We can do searches in the LDAP, Curie in the Active Directory and see all the workers that are not even in, in the database itself. We can see all the corporate and personnel. And then we can do a lot of not nice things using the malware. So this is how in five steps we can penetrate every corporate using social engineering. So what can we do about it? Basically it all begins with education. We have to do two types of education. One is for our professionals. We have to educate the IT guys. We have to educate our security experts to close the switches ports, to define the firewall rules and the antiviruses and do holistic analysis and risk analysis to the corporate. But there is another thing that is very, very important. We should educate all the workers in our company to be aware of the security risk. We should do e-learning, we should do auditing, we should test them, we should embrace them to be our security agents around the company. And a company that will succeed in doing this will earn a lot of security. Thank you very much for this. Have a good day.